Hi, uh, it's time to update this Audacity tutorial that I've had on YouTube for a little while. 16 tips in 9 minutes is so 2018. So we are going to update it for the latest version of Audacity. And as I'm going through this tutorial, please hit the pause button if you need to catch up. Uh, hit the J button to rewind a few seconds or the L button to fast forward and you control the pace with which you get these tips. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get started and do the countdown exercise. First thing I'm going to suggest is when you start a new project in Audacity, always go to the audio settings and double check what you've got. Host MME, that's the most fundamental one, although Wasapi is handy for loopbacks. Playback, a device I'm using a sound mapper from Microsoft. I'm recording with a Yeti microphone, although I could change it over to a webcam, but the Yeti is just off to the side here and it's a better quality USB mic. Yeah. And the rest of the settings you can see here. But to make sure a signal's coming through, I'm going to use this record meter and start monitoring so I can see the peaks and I can see where the levels are at. And it's peaking pretty high right now. Peaking in the yellow is good. Peaking in the red is really bad. And you can see that if you hit record as well, that if I get too close to a microphone, it's going to clip and cause a lot of distortion. So you've got to find that proper distance between you and your mic. I'm going to hit the space bar. Hit space bar to stop a recording. Hit space bar again to play it back. See that if you hit record as well. Okay, so that's working out okay. Next tip, get rid of the garbage tracks. So Audacity records in a track. It's kind of like recording on a magnetic tape. And we're going to record something and then chop it all up, mess around and teach you a little bit about the editing. So here we go. Let's give this a try. This is the countdown exercise and it starts now. <clears throat> 10, 9, <clears throat> 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Spacebar. Next tip, Control F. Control F expands or fills the frame. Now I know this was garbage, so I'm going to highlight it with the cursor and hit delete and get rid of it. I know this is a glitch here too, so I'm going to get rid of it. Let's see. Now when I click and hit space bar, it'll start playing here. 10, 9. <clears throat> so next thing I have is a little <clears throat> Again, you want to get rid of little glitches like this. So mm -hmm is definitely something I can get rid of. <clears throat> but here's a clever way to get rid of it. You can highlight it and hit delete to cut it. That's not a bad plan. Okay, let's do that. Because it does sort of keep the pacing going. But this next one over here, well, this is a little different. So here's your next tip. Where Control F fills the frame, Control E zooms in on your selection. And you can see that I have a little glitch here to get rid of it. I don't want to lose any of the timing of what's going on here. Highlight it, Control F to see it in context. And another way to get rid of clicks and pops and stuff like that, is a generate silence. Generating silence lets you sort of patch over something without changing the timing of it. If you have a lot of things that you have to get rid of, it's nice to make a hotkey for that generate silence. Here's a way you can do it. You can go up to edit, preferences. You can go to keyboard and you can type the word silence. Now it was a menu drop down command, but you can find any command that's there and you can go in here, normally it looks like this, Generate Menu Silence. You can click on that and click on the little space here. And I use an Alt-S for Generate Silence. It's not used by any other uh, command or function inside of Audacity. So that's another hot tip for you. Next thing we want to do with this, the very next step, Normalize. We want to expand the dynamic range of this recording. So I'm going to use an effect called Normalize. And Normalize stretches it out. Sometimes this is set to minus two. I'm going to stretch it out so that it fills the canvas to within one decibel of its extremes. And I find that's a good, comfortable place to be. And it just pushed it a little bit. And now that that's done, I'm going to show you another trick. I'm going to select this track and I'm going to use Control C, click outside and Control V to make a duplicate of it. I can compare what I'm about to do next with the denoising before and after. Next tip that's up there though is I'd like to name this and this top track. I think I'm going to name this one uh, Original. And this one over here, I'm going to rename it as Processed so that you can do stuff non-destructively. So here's where I'm going right now. The next stage, now that we've normalized this, we want to get rid of the noise. You can sort of hear it there. This room has noise. If I turn the mute on the mic, you can see what a difference room noise makes. I've highlighted a chunk of what is just room noise. No clicks, no voice or anything like that. I'm going to go to an effect called Noise Reduction. 
and I'm going to get a noise profile. That is, it's going to look at that and it's going to turn it into a noise profile. And now I can highlight this whole strip, go effect, I can go to noise reduction, and now I can actually apply it. It's unset to re reduce, say OK, and notice that the waveform is no longer all crusty looking. It looks good. And we can actually hear the difference as I play it back. I'm going to use the solo feature. Solo, you can kind of choose what you want to listen to. By clicking solo, it mutes the other track. So here's what it sounded like and what it's, it's going to sound like now that I've noise reduced it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay. So if you can't hear the difference, use headphones and you certainly can, but it's going to make for a more seamless editing. So I'm done with that original, it's going away. Next thing to do, well, I'll trim this up just a little bit. And anytime along that you think you're happy with something, save the project. So the big thing with editing, this is like a, mag a piece of magnetic tape. Click a place where you'd like to cut it, and the command is under Audio Clips, Edit, Audio Clips, and Split, or Control-I. That lets you cut that tape. And you used to have to use a new or a tool, a different tool up top to move things around. Now you just grab it by the title bar. Things move around very, very easily. Piece of cake. There's a better way to split it though, and I like this instead. I'm going to Control Z. I'm going to use something else that's under that same thing. Audio Clips Split New. Control Alt S, and it's worth memorizing. So I can highlight a chunk. Control Alt S, and it splits it and and jams it down to a new uh, track. And I can do this for every word in my countdown just to play around with it and get used to how it works. And notice when I get to the next one, okay, we've run out of space. That's okay, I can keep doing it. It's just rolling on down here below. We'll fix that in a second. I've just about got this all done. It's all rolled there. And here's the next thing that we can fix. Remember Control F, squeeze things side to side. Now we want to squeeze things vertically. And you can do that. You can grab the tracks and you can stretch them but control shift F will do it for all the tracks that you have. It means you no longer see certain controls here, but they're still underneath there if you have to expand them and it's not gonna have a big effect on what we're doing. So now we can start editing this thing. Everything plays exactly the same. 10, nine, eight. But now we can use these little handles and start sliding things around. I might move these things over here like this and move this thing over here like this. And what I'm going to do is reverse the countdown. I can even let things overlap a little bit so it speeds up the countdown so I can get it over with a little bit sooner. And you've got total control over the timing of this stuff. So now it sounds like this. Zero. One, two, three, four, five. Get the idea. Next trick. Control A selects all the clips so I can move all of these things at the same time. To merge this thing together into a stereo recording, and to demonstrate that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put all of the even numbers on the same track. What I'm doing is skipping over every other track, and I'm clicking in the white space, not on a button, but in the white space where the buttons reside, to select every other one of those. And I goofed up on this one. Okay, so I can unselect it by control clicking it. I go to the tracks menu, I go to mix, mix and render, and it squishes all those clips into the same track. It has a little bit of something here too. I wonder what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know how I got there, but I'm gonna get rid of it. It was Alt S. Oh yeah, that's what I did to do my noise generator. Clean that up. So that's one way you can select alternating tracks. The other way you can select tracks is to click, hold the shift if you have consecutive tracks that you wanna select. And notice they all turn blue. And I'm gonna use the same thing. Uh, tracks, mix, mix and render, got it. So now it's alternating, zero, one, two, three. So we can see it to hear it. This is a new trick I've managed to push into this. I'm recording this on OBS so I can get stereo and it sounds like this, zero, one, two, three, four. So if you're listening on a stereo headset right now, you should be hearing uh, the, f the first set of numbers, the even numbers on the right ear, the second set of numbers, the odd ones on the left. Last thing I wanna do is let's publish this and then let's wrap this bad boy up. But to publish it into a format that's a little bit more universal, I can choose File Export as an MP3 or a WAV. I'll choose an MP3 in this case. Uh, watch carefully what you have here for, for MP3s because it lets you choose the quality down below. So I'll go with a standard quality. I hit Save. I can put in metadata. I choose not to right now. I say OK. And the file has now been saved. And where was that uh, version 4? There it is. 
zero. One, two, three, four. There it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, we managed to get through it. I don't know how many tips that was. Hope that helped people out a lot. Uh, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, put your comments down below for any other things that you'd like to see introduced into these tutorials. You'll have to do your part by liking and subscribing and thumbs upping and ringing bells and things. So feel free to do that. Subscribe and you'll be able to find these tutorials in the future. Hope that helped. Bye for now.